Big thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. The superhero landing effect is one of the most iconic visual effect shots of all time. Millions of people have recreated it, as it's often one of the first shots you make when learning visual effects. But somehow, it always looks fake. So, what's the secret behind Hollywood shots? And can we use it ourselves to make our shots look just as good as Hollywood's? Let's find out. Alright, alright. There are of course many things Hollywood is doing differently from us, and I can't possibly explain all of them in one video. Or heck, even know all of them. But there's still a couple of tricks that nobody uses which can bring your average looking superhero landing shot to a whole new level. Making it look something like this. To achieve this effect, we need to film a couple of things. First of all, a tilt down movement. Make sure to use a wider lens and keep the camera relatively low to the ground. After that, just lock the camera and try your best to land like a superhero. Most tutorials end here and use a program like After Effects to cut out the actor and animate him falling from the sky. This however has the big disadvantage that you don't get the perspective shift when you come closer to the camera. And the motion blur can look a little bit fake as well. To solve this issue, we need to scan a 3D model of ourselves that we can then later animate to fall from the sky. There are lots of ways to scan a 3D model and since the quality doesn't have to be good, you can really use whatever you want. I just used an app called Kiri Engine. This is not sponsored by the way. I just really like how easy it is to scan a model in this way. You can just create a free account and then in the app select photo scan and then take photos and let someone walk around you and capture photos from every perspective. Make sure to stand as still as possible while doing this. Once this is finished, delete all the images that could confuse the tracker because they are blurry or something and click on all photos and proceed. Now change the file format to FBX and upload them. The last thing we still need is an HDI of our environment. If you have a 360 camera, you can create one of your own. But if not, that's also fine, since the lighting is already baked into our model. So you can just download one from the internet. Polyhaven.com is a good site for this. If you don't want to go through the hassle of shooting all of this yourself, then you can just click the link in the description and download my footage, HDI and 3D model, all for free. Now, with all of our assets sorted, we can fire up Blender. But before we're gonna do that, I wanna give a big thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives, with thousands of classes led by industry experts across film, illustration, design and more. And I think one of the most exciting features on Skillshare is their learning path. These are curated class collections designed to take you from beginner to advanced in a specific skill or area of expertise. I've been checking out this learning path from Olden Peters. It's four classes where you get a solid foundation for visual effects in Blender. What I really like is how detailed he is about everything he does, that he also shows how to compose the shots in After Effects, as this step is often skipped. So, the first 500 people to use my link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So, check out the first link in the description. Alright, let's start by preparing our model. You can use the low poly version and align it with the scene. Then, in X-Ray and Face Select mode, delete everything that isn't yourself and take a look at your beautiful model. If it has some problems here and there, then that's absolutely fine, since we're just going to see it far in the distance. As a next step, we need to create a rig for our model. And we could create it ourselves in Blender, but it's way faster if we let Mixamo do it. So, just log in with a free account and then import your cleaned up model. Place the markers and let the autorigger do its thing. Once it's finished, search for the falling idle animation and download it. Back in the new scene, you can open the motion tracking workspace and import your footage. To make the alignment of the 3D model easier, the footage should be cut together at the point where the camera pan is finished. Next, you can change the frame rate, scene length and resolution to match your footage. Oh, and change the render engine to cycles. For the camera check, start by adding in some tracking markers. Making them really big worked better for me, since I had a lot of motion blur on my footage. For the most part, it tracked pretty well, but sometimes it still required some help. Once you've created enough tracking markers, just press A to select all of them and then click on Solve Camera Motion. I got a solve error of 0.88 pixels, which is good. Everything under the value of 1 can be considered as a good track. Next, we can press Set Up Tracking Scene and Set Up Background. And then select 3 tracking markers on the ground and make them the floor. If you don't have anything on the floor, you can add them now and resolve the camera. 
The only thing left is making one tracking marker the origin of the scene, setting up the y-axis and then we're good to go. In the layout tab we can check back on the camera tracking. In my case it looks really good, but the scene is way too big. The solid on the ground is actually 8 meters wide. To match the size we need to go back in the tracking tab, select two tracking markers, change the distant value and then set and apply the scale. Once everything is looking good we can delete the ground plane, the cube, the light and even the background collection so that only our tracked camera is left. Perfect. Now onto the fun stuff. Create a path and then in edit mode delete all the vertices. With the pen tool we can now draw a path where we're going to fly along. Really make it big enough and increase the resolution. With the fly path done we can import our mixer animation. Create an empty and parent the bones to it so that our 3D model now follows the movement of the empty. To now follow the fly path we need to add a follow path constraint to our empty and select the path as our target. If we now position ourselves at the end of the empty and change the offset, we can see our animation. So just go to the point where we land on the ground, change the offset and create a keyframe. Then go a couple of frames back and move the 3D model far in the distance. Make sure to set the interpolation mode to linear and check out your animation. This is already looking pretty cool, but we're still missing one thing, which is the animation of the 3D character. As you can see, the model starts in the falling animation, but once he gets closer to the camera, he should morph into my position. To do it, go to the frame where you land on the ground. Select the bones and press Ctrl Tab to switch into pose mode. Enable auto keying and under viewport display, check in front. And now you can rotate the bones to match your pose. This doesn't have to be perfect. Alright, we're almost finished with the 3D part. To re-add the texture, import the Photoscan 3D model and copy the material. In the word tab, click on color and change it to environment texture. Here you can open your HDI and then in the word shader, rotate it to match your background. To now render your scene, check transparent and under the render options, set the samples. Something like 300 or even lower will work just fine. And then in the compositor, just connect the render layer with the composite node and you're good to go. Once the render is finished, you could use DaVinci Resolve to do the compositing, however, I'm going to show you how to do it in After Effects. So the first thing we want to do is of course import our footage and put it in the correct position. And one thing that immediately catches my attention is that the color looks off. To fix it, you can just add a curves effect and tweak it until it looks good. If you're struggling with that though, I have a trick for you. Right under the preview monitor are three colored dots. If you click on them, you can solo each of the three channels, so red, green and blue. Let's just start with red and then in the curve settings change the channel to red as well. If you now adjust the curves it will be a lot easier to match. After that just repeat this step for the other colors. And from here on it's really up to you. I still keyed out the trees so that I could fly behind them. I also added some dust elements, rolled myself out to add some cracks on the ground and then finally a color grade and a camera shake to finish it off. If you've made it to here then Clap yourself on the shoulder, as you did a great job. Make sure to share your video on YouTube or Instagram to impress your friends and also tag me so that I can see it and maybe even give you some feedback. Alright guys, that's it for this video and I'll catch you in the next one.